But um, Nukem. brilliant play. <laughs> yeah, nu Nukem. Yeah, exactly. Terran Nuke on the way. Uh, nuclear launch detected. Unfortunately, Jadong has been wiped out by the 4GG's radiation from his nuclear attack. But um, yeah, I think the 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 biggest, t the most telling thing about that entire series for me was how in game two and in game three, both times, 4GG was actually able to kill Jadong before he could get his defilers out. And to me, that's a testament to first of all his preparation and his choice of builds, and to second of all his early game play and adaptation. Uh, and and I don't know what he's done so differently. I mean, obviously we've seen him do a few things like the early engineering bay, the two racks into CC build, and obviously bamboozling Jadong in this game as well. Jadong, though, going for the over pool in game one and nine pool in game three, did leave himself a little bit open to that sort of build from 4GG. But I guess 4GG takes all the credit. But yeah. Sorry for rambling, um, but yeah, huge testament to 4GG's play for the way that I think he's won Game 2 and Game 3. I think it says a lot about his preparation and, I suppose, his temperament. And certainly, we can say that 4GG is a big match player. He didn't crumble under the pressure. He's managed to take this championship, and um, could we be seeing great things for him? I think we can. Uh, this In is the future. so reminiscent of a series. Yes, I, I think absolutely. Um, uh, th this was so reminiscent of uh, Boxer versus Yellow, perhaps in the old days. That's what I was thinking. Uh, when Boxer dispatched Yellow in an MSL, or no, an OSL semifinals within 25 minutes, I think, of gameplay. And today has been a little bit longer, but um, really it hasn't been very much. Uh, in 40 minutes of gameplay, three games, uh, Jadong lost to 4GG. And Boxer was like that against Yellow uh, very scarily. I mean, of course, they played several times, and every time Boxer just figure out what Yellow was going to do and rushed him and killed him. Uh, and of course, this this game, these games weren't rush builds, but it, it reminded me eerily of the same way. And I think 4GG, uh, definitely a dark horse, but is someone to watch out for in the future. I mean, he is the MSL champion. He dethroned uh, Jadong, who was, of course, the reigning MSL champion. And uh, it's unfortunate that our video didn't allow us to see what's going on after the game, what kind of celebrations are coming from 4GG, and what kind of reaction we have from Jadong. Um, do you think this is a, a bit of a the start of a bit of a slide for Jadong, or do you think that Jadong will recover from this? Uh, note he does have the GOM TV um, finals to be played, uh, I think probably in a week or two. Uh, he definitely, uh, he's already made it into the finals. He's awaiting the results of um, Flash versus uh, Backhole. Yeah, what are the, what are the what are the things Flash and Jadong have in common? Um, not that they're both potentially going to be in the finals together of the GOM TV Intel Classic, but that they've both been beaten by 4GG in the MSL. They both got that in common, unfortunately. <laughs> what a thing to have in common. Ouch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a little bit of a bitter taste in my mouth um, because. On the one hand, we've seen 4GG beat some very tough players playing some really good StarCraft in this round. The one significant thing I'd noted before this this game, I hadn't mentioned it in my commentary, but the one thing I had noted was that 4GG hasn't had a single tough Zerg player to face throughout this MSL. The other thing was that obviously Jadong was o the only Zerg player really left in the last, in, the, in the, I think in the last 16 of this MSL, uh, and that was surprising to say the least, that Jadong was the only Zerg player left in, in that bracket, and obviously he made it to the finals, which is a testament to his skill, which says this that the map pool is slightly tough for Zergs, or maybe there just aren't that many top Zergs around. But yeah, I think the fact that 4GG hasn't faced a top-level Zerg player in a, in, in a long time left a lot of question marks over how he was going to cope in this finals, and yet he's won these, this comprehensively without having to cheese. I have to say, Jadong probably has made him look a little bit better than maybe he is, because Jadong tried to be a little bit too creative when he didn't necessarily need to be. Um, but that being said, maybe I'm just being bitter because I'm a Zerg fan. I mean, 4GG has beaten the top players on his way to this championship, and, you know, for some reason I'm still not convinced that he's the one to have the next dominating reign, that he's going to be a boxer or or we, what we thought Flash was going to be or an UV for the for the Terran fans. It's been a long time since Terran fans have had a dominating Terran player on the scene since UV's downfall. So I'm not sure if that's sour grapes for me. Yet, despite that, I have to admit, I know, I know a few people have said that this finals was a damn squid of that match. Watching it, it didn't feel like that to me. I thought it was an enthralling experience. I thought it was really exciting. Uh, and I thought 4GG's play... Uh, actually made that a really entertaining final to watch. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's anything wrong with the finals. Um, and I agree with you kind of in in that I don't sense 4GG is necessarily going to become a great, like uh, Flash almost became, like a uh, first savior for a period. And I, by the way, I still think Flash is coming back. I mean, <laughs> I thought he was going to come back and, uh, and win the MSL uh, after he lost to Luxury, but that didn't happen. But um, 
I, I still think um, it's too early to say that Flash isn't going to become the next I Love Uwe B. Uh, but anyway, for 4 GG, what I see him as is a, a reactionary player. He plays very well when he can study his opponent, when he, you know, like Patton against Rommel, when he reads Rommel's book and, and just realizes how to fight against them. But we haven't seen any sort of build that we can call the 4 GG build. I mean, Flash, of course, has his Flash build against Protoss. Um, Savior had the silver build against uh, against Terran. Perhaps it's just because 4GG is so so much of a dark horse, so much of a, a newcomer to the scene that we haven't seen anything absolutely distinctive about his play. Uh, so I like to think that he is more right now just a, a very studied, a very academic player who just really studied Flash very well, defeated Flash using a combination of fast rushes and uh, fast tech pushes, and now against Jadong, uh, just studied Jadong's play and went for this fast tech every single game. And uh, really, I don't know. Um, I just don't know if 4GG can, can be the next great player or, or will be, but certainly it's exciting to see a, a fresh face here. And uh, by the way, I mean, just just for the purposes of Pro League, I, I think Lake Half has just got a bulletproof lineup here. I mean, Jadong and... Uh, <laughs> And um, what's his face? 4GG, uh, Backhoe, um, Anytime, all these great players on their team right now. I, I think they're going to be the new uh, stars a in the Pro League, but uh, that's, of course, another story. Um, I do. What do you think about Jadong's play overall? Do you think he was not as good as uh, he's been when he was at his best, or do you think this was simply a matter of uh, 4GG outthinking him? Yeah, I, I never thought I'd hear, I'd see the day when Backhoe was considered a great StarCraft player, but, you know... <laughs> that happens, I guess. Um, you know, this is what happens when you grow old, and you know things are obviously never as good as they were when you were young. But um, yeah, how how motivated is Jadon going to be tomorrow in the playoffs? <laughs> I wonder how motivated is is he going to be? How much down in his confidence he's going to be? Because he's a key player for Lee Calf, obviously against SK Team One. Um, but that's going to be exciting to watch. Moltrap and Diggity will be bringing that cast live. I don't know if I'll be around to join them or not, depending on how strict my wife is. And yes, unfortunately, I am constrained by those chains. But yeah, um, I don't think Jadong necessarily played badly. I think where he lost was almost in his choice of starting builds. So I think while he didn't necessarily lose the StarCraft, he lost the mental game. He lost the psychological battle against 4GG. 4GG seemed to have him outwitted there, and he also had the better preparation, clearly. Um, I think, despite that, though, we did see that 4GG's micro wasn't perfect throughout, even in Game 3, when Jadong went in with, with yeah. masses, links, masses of links from those three hatcheries. He almost broke 4GG down when he shouldn't have had any right to. Um, 4GG almost got caught off guard there. Uh, and then again, when he was breaking into Jadong's base, he almost, Jadong almost successfully defended when he shouldn't have been able to. It was just 4GG's reinforcements, last-minute reinforcements arriving that clinched it for him there. So I'm not completely convinced that 4GG is going to be the kind of player. I think 4GG might almost be a little bit like GG play. Solid, can beat the big players on his day, but not comprehensive in his domination of the scene. Uh, and I think I don't think it's because he doesn't have a unique build. I think it's because he relies so heavily on preparation. I wonder what's going to happen to him when he is when he if he ever manages to make it in both the OSL and the MSL, and he's playing pro league at the same time, and he's having to prepare for all of these tournaments. How is how is that going to affect him? Because he's not going to be able to have the time to just focus on one matchup, which is what he's been able to do since he's only been on the in the MSL. That being said, Jadong was also in the MSL, uh, and maybe he was a little bit overconfident. Going into this and didn't prepare as well as he should have. Um, nevertheless, it's been a great, great. I think it's been a great final. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and uh, since I always say uh, Zerg players are, <laughs> are the most most emotional of all races, I think the most um, sort of bound by their their either high points or their low points in their spirit. I certainly hope that Jadong isn't going to go into some sort of savior like decline. Um, certainly, he has a lot of games upcoming for him, uh, including the Pro League finals tonight. Uh, not the finals, but the playoffs. Um, I believe they will be at uh, 10, p 10 p.m. Pacific time, um, so 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know when we're going to get this cast out. Hopefully before then, so you guys, uh, this information will actually be pertinent to you. But um, certainly Jadon has a lot of games up for him. Of course, he does have the GOM TV Avertel Intel Classic uh, finals coming for him. And I just hope he doesn't go into any kind of decline because that would just make me very sad. And I'm sure most Zerg fans very sad. Um, we do have, of course, July as the OSL champion. So certainly uh, the period of, uh, well, we could be seeing, of course, a resurgence from Zerg. We probably are in the middle of a Zerg renaissance uh, if we ever have been out of it um, is debatable. But uh, anyway, so Jadong, I think, uh, yeah, was... was sort of thrown off his game towards the end there um, and certain game three I don't think it was necessary for him to go for a nine pool uh, I think it was just been
and best to, to go for really uh, his, his macro style and just try to defend well uh, against 4GG, but I guess he thought Tia map being the map it was, he needed to try to end it quickly, but uh, I think a two-player map is just so hard to go for a rush like that. Uh, but anyway, I think it was a very exciting series. Um, yeah, I enjoyed casting with you, and uh, I'll put this up on the accounts as soon as possible. Um, I pretty much have nothing else to add. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming in the next few days, um, and just, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, actually, I think we have Peanut in here. I don't know. I think Peanut's muted. I don't know if she's awake. If she wants to, Peanut's going to be someone new who's going to be entering into the StarCraft scene. I wonder if she's got any thoughts on it. So, Peanut, have you got any thoughts on it that you want to say anything if you're still awake? If you actually got to see those games. I don't know. Yeah, I think Peanut might have fallen asleep. Oh, there she is. Oh, uh, hey I there. <laughs> Is this guest commentator? Peanut, surprise guest is, analysis sorry. at the end. Surprise Peanut, what, have you got anything to add? Surprise. Um, just that. Uh, yeah, I I thought it was very exciting. I thought uh, the um, the mutilus micro especially was really cool to watch. And um, I'm yeah, it's uh, 4:30 a.m. and I'm supposed to meet with my friend at 11 to get something before we go uh, see the playoffs. But I'm yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, wow. Hardcore oh, StarCraft was... fan right here, guys. 4:30 a.m. Gotta be up at 11. Yeah. Party hard. Um, although I guess watching StarCraft games or listening to StarCraft commentary at 4:30 in the morning cannot necessarily be considered partying hard. But um, I guess it that's how we party. roll down here. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure we'll be a party tomorrow after the playoffs. I'm, uh, I'm sure there will be something going on with all the fan clubs and everything like that. I'm very much looking forward to it. Wait, Clazart. Yeah, so I'm, I want to make sure sorry, that is, that is not Mrs. Clazart, right? I can't really no, tell no. by the voice, but that is that's, not Mrs. Clazart. Okay. No, that's <laughs> Peanut, new up and coming StarCraft okay. aficionado, who I think is nice. looking to join in the commentator spree and possibly the uh, StarCraft scene and SC2GG staff and whatnot, but we'll we'll see. Um, but I just thought we'd, we'd give a shout out since she popped in here. So uh, thank you. Yeah, someday, Peanut, someday I hope to be worthy. Jealous of Peanut getting to go to the playoff finals, which alone, uh, since, since I'm not going to go, I'm incredibly jealous, obviously. But anyway, great game of StarCraft. I think we should end the recording here. And a uh, bunch of people seem to have joined us in the Ventrilo channel for the recording, so I guess we should let everyone talk. And thanks to everyone who, who listened in, and thanks to everyone who's watching this on YouTube. I think it's sour grapes by people who say that this final wasn't epic. I think it's sour grapes, because I am a Zerg fan, but I've got to admit, that was great StarCraft. Thank you guys for watching.